Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Uh, my name is Nad Cyrus. I was one of the students of um, recently concluded eTech training mobile app course. Um, we had a presentation, or rather, a project to do uh, to showcase you know, a bit of what we learned during the last um, several weeks. And when given this input, I wanted to have a project that was practical, something that could be used by um, people in the real world but also something that actually demonstrated a little bit of what I, I learned. So, um, funny enough, one day um, I was about to go and buy lunch at the cafeteria close by and realized that um, it was a bit late. And I was thinking that if there was a way to, to at least have submitted my order um, to the cafeteria, I would have had the comfort of strolling over there and getting my food and, and coming back to work instead of having to run the KFC. So, um, I started thinking what could I use and I thought about, you know, this course and possibly doing an app that I could order. Now, that was a personal thing, but I wanted to make something that was generic that could be used by you know any entrepreneurial person or any business. So whether you're a restaurateur or someone in real estate, entertainment, um, I wanted to build something that was reasonably easy to get online, not requiring any sort of real development skills, uh, and something that could also have uh, online presence as well, so it wasn't necessarily limited or restricted to somebody having a, a mobile device. So after doing a little bit of, of research, I, um, I thought about doing something that was responsive, and I have to say that building a truly responsive site that will work well on all platforms is extremely difficult. And uh, with that, I will, I will start off. So this, this app is called Best Movies Ever. It really showcases uh, uh, sort of a, a mom and pop shop that sells movies um, online where you can place an order, uh, figure out how much you can owe, and, and go and collect it. All right? So I'll take you through it. So um, you have the title at the top there, uh, a little bit of multiple effect to just highlight a little bit what we learnt in the class. Um, these three bars is actually a, a navigation icon. I think some people call it a hamburger icon, but it's navigation. And this is part of the responsive aspect or element of the site. If I show you this in a, in a browser, um, you'll actually see, um, where is, there it is, you'll actually see that there are actually menus um, laid out, okay? I'll get back to that a little later. So, um, the first element on the page is a large attractive picture of a smoothie, something to get your mouth watering because it is in fact a smoothie um, app. So, this there demonstrates a simple slideshow concept. So I step back. This site, I wanted to have, um, as I mentioned, a template that people could use, and it has a few navigational elements. Um, there's a slide show at the top. Um, we have navigational buttons on the left and the right, so I can click here and it scrolls through. And I think a lot of us are familiar with the, the dot type navigation element uh, at the bottom. Now there's some text that you can actually put at the bottom as well to to help make the, the product more enticing to get you to, to actually um, go deeper with the app. I remember this is not just an app, it's also a website as well. Okay. So, um, you know, under the, the, the slideshow, it gives you a little bit of a blurb about um, the product. So you could actually navigate by simply scrolling down. The other way to navigate would be to simply come in uh, to the menu and jump to where you want to go to because if you say it's successful, people are returning and they aren't going to want to read a boat and go to the slideshow each and every time. They're going to want to jump straight to the immediately matter. So, if I jump to menu, this is where now you're presented now with um, several options on here. Now, one of the things I want to sort of highlight is this particular part is actually driven by JavaScript. My original concept was to make this database driven, where um, whether you're a restaurant and you offer different menus on different days or at different times, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, or Monday, Tuesday, to, to whatever, you could actually go in and uh, program that very, very easily or um, you know if things were not say on the menu because we're seasonal say um, um, give me something Asian cherry or I'm trying to think of my um, Sikat I love Sikat and you can't really get it so that was one of my things <laughs> so anyways so there are several several um, elements here some several options in the menu and as you scroll down um, you'll see them. Now, the responsiveness you can see goes a little wacky in places depending on the, the resolution. So some work still needs to be to be had there. Okay. 
jump out there. Now, getting into the, the functionality now, so each of these icons represents a different menu item. The menu item has a label, there's a description, there's a cost, and there's some options. Because I want it to be, you know, real world, um, you know, in terms of my, my representation. So each, each element has small, medium, large. These can be replaced by different options that you want to supersize, or you had like a vegetarian option, or some sort of variation to the particular menu item. So I didn't get too much into that, but you know, all I'm pretty much say small, medium, large, and then you could actually then select different ones. So again, if someone has sent you to get an order, you're ordering for more than one person, you have options where you can go through and select different things. So this, if I wanted to say I want to order, you know, um, a few of these, as I am selecting these it's actually um, building a sort of a shopping cart. Now in the mobile app, um, because space is tight, I actually include it in the menu, so at any given point, and you can sort of see what you're racking up. Okay, so that's right now 4875. Now we can scroll down, and you know, we can add additional things in here, and the math, the math is good. <laughs> we come back here, you'll see that's incrementing and that will, that will go up, you know, you could actually order quite a bit of them if you really wanted to for a party or individually. So, um, that gives you that option and, you know, when you're finished and you want to check out, you can simply click check out. And the idea would be is that, you know, if you want to be very sophisticated on the far right, you could have a shopping card and use PayPal or some sort of credit card processing. Or if you're a really simple shop and you know your clients, this could be membership based whereby you accept um, an email or some sort of message from the from the, the individual, your client, and uh, you process that order. No, no different than someone calling in an order and saying, well, listen, this is not, um, I want my usual to a special, and there's that trust element there. So I wanted to have that, that, that range, okay? Now, like any other site, there's always, you know, you want to have the about blurb, and there's usually an element there to have a contact. So I use a, a, a pop-up sort of contact element to sort of save space. Now the nice thing about this site, which I found was pretty cool, is um, everything is actually one page. This is a one page site. And most of the responsive sites that I see out there for simple shops essentially have sections that essentially, when you're clicking on links, are essentially navigating through different different sections in the page. So it gives the the sort of uh, perception of a larger site, but really and truly you're just hopping on one page. It becomes very lightweight. Um, and you know, very dynamic. So you load once and you're in. You don't have to worry about jumping around a whole lot and having um, to worry about pages loading or not loading. Okay. So um, it does demonstrate quite a bit of what we learned. Um, there's you know um, rendering of fonts, um, slideshow. Um, the thing that I actually worked quite a bit on was actually JavaScript and hence because it what it does instead of having a real database because as an IT person start thinking security and how they connect and say you know let's get on this keep it simple. I built a, 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 a almost called a JavaScript database library of the menu options, mm -hmm. and in there you have your name, you have your description, um, the various options that you can see here. But then there are other options that you could actually essentially toggle off and on. And then what would happen is that the first array builds all your options, and the second one, depending on which ones are available, populates the ones that are actually available into a second sort of temporary database, and that's then what's represented on screen. So again, the idea would be um, eventually to have a very simplistic uh, interface that the, um, the shop owner uses. They can control it without being a techie. So as things change in their, in their, in their world, they can follow these things off and on, and, in, and it's represented um, in real time on this. So if I jump quickly, you'll see that when you have a, a big browser, you have much more room to play with. The menus uh, options are, are much more um, laid out. They do the exact same thing, just that it's it's you know trying to take advantage of the additional screen area. So you'll notice that you know everything resizes this big this big picture here. Um, you know scrolls down a bit um, to fit the screen and what's not. Okay. Um, if I were to go into um, these options here, you know you can see it, it's laid out a little differently here. You know you have more space. So the elements are side by side as opposed to um, on top of each other. Yeah. And uh, again, you can then see your your shopping cart options building uh, in real time um, as you go. 
And if for some reason you decide that you don't want it anymore, you click zero, it decommits. So um, it, that, that part is fully functional. I found the biggest challenge really and truly was um, trying to control the responsiveness throughout all the platforms. That, that is, I guess, a real world challenge that anyone who's building an app faces. So again, um, just in closing, it's a very simplistic site, one page, um, designed to be used as a template for local entrepreneurs that want the ability to be both online um, and net, as well as having a, a, a mobile app presence uh, to give them that sort of maximum exposure uh, with little tech uh, knowledge and, and obviously then not requiring a lot of uh, overhead costs. That's it.